welcome on this Friday afternoon, depending on your time zone. Uh, this is a cup of coffee with Cha Rules, uh, the, the trial show, just kind of set aside to ask, answer any and all questions that come my way from all the people out there that might have, um, need some guidance with the IRS issues, with mortgage payment issues, with uh, relationship issues, spiritual issues. Uh, Queenie, it looked like I saw you pop in there, one of my, my three only moderators for a second, but I don't know if you joined up top and this thing kind of, oh yeah, you're on. Uh, how you doing, beautiful? Um, had a wild day today, almost didn't come on, been been all to the wall from from the moment I woke up, it's just been nonstop. And then I, after I leave um, here, I got just enough time to shower and then I'm going to bachata dance lessons. So that, that should be interesting, watching a gringo, a six foot three gringo on the dance floor. <clears throat> um, trying to trying to break it down. Um, well, it's an intro, so you know, see if I like it or not. But um, uh, yeah, today we went to uh, had my son had swim lessons, and immediately went to the water park, and it was all good up until the end. He started getting sleepy, and uh, in the lazy river, he was holding on to the side. This is funny, you know, like he was holding on to the side because I told him I was like, you don't want to get hit by those water jets, so he's holding on to the side. He hopped out the raft, holding on to the side. And he's just dangling there like a turd, and the and the the current ends up pulling down his pants. So his his he's crying. His uh, he's banging his knees up on the wall. His uh, uh, swimsuit's wrapped around his ankles. One of his water shoes pops off, and um, I had to I had to come save him. But that was uh, it was good up until that point. Then it was time to take him take him back home. But um, like I said, I'm. I'm Pretty, pretty busy, but I do have just enough time to slide an hour in here. Typically, is what I try to set aside to be able to help guide and enlighten any and all who have any questions um, that want to uh, ask her. Uh, Queenie, you'll love Bachata. Have fun. I, yeah, I think so. I've done a little bit, but not enough to like where, the, like the man's supposed to leave all in that. And, and I kind of love uh, Spanish because they don't, I know they're trying to do Spanish X, but. You know, typically Spanish is a traditional type of um, culture where it's, you know, masculine dominant ma male leads and the female follows. And, and that's how, you know, a typical divine feminine energy wants to be um, guided, you know, to an extent. You know, the, the, um, we all have our different um, energies and, and, you know, frequencies and whatnot, but divine feminine energy and divine masculine energy together is phenomenal. And I, that's why I love the Spanish culture because it's somewhat untainted from the 78,000 different genders that are out there now. It's, it's just, you know, male, female, boom, boom, done. And, you know, typical female, somewhat submissive to the guidance of the, the man, the stud, the guy who's supposed to be guiding. And um, I, I can't guide on the dance floor because I don't know how to... I don't know how to bachata, so whenever like I'm trying to dance with a female, it's like, well, you've got to be the man because I don't. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, call me Susan. You can go ahead and you know throw draw a mustache on and lead me around because I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing. Um, although I, I do know how to shake my hips a little bit. But yeah, I think you're right. I think I'll enjoy it, and it's just kind of like an intro class. See if I like it and whatnot. So, um, guys, I set aside an hour to try to help. Um, y'all and, and light y'all and all your paths between the three lights of nature, spirit, and commerce. Um, that's uh, my walk, what I have been kind of not necessarily tasked to do, but that is what what my walk is for. Um, plant, plant eater. From a Cuban who loves to dance, you're doing right by your woman, my friend. Yeah, I hope so. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's so much I gotta do. I gotta learn, I gotta learn how to cook. I gotta learn Spanish. I gotta learn bachata. I gotta learn. Um, uh, I, you know, I know all the commercial stuff, but don't nobody want to talk about that unless you're talking about that money. And you know, you start talking about about money, you get everybody's ears. They'll start coming on here quick. But yeah, that's a. Uh, uh, I'm never done learning. I'm always a student. Always trying to gain more and more knowledge and perspective from everybody uh, the best I can. Um, keeping my my ears open and trying to take a neutral position unless I've done a lot of studies. It takes a lot for me to take a position unless I'm kind of upset. Like my kids are really good at getting me out of my square. 
So I hope y'all are enjoying your Friday. Uh, uh, this live will be on YouTube. The audio will be on my Telegram group. I have social medias linked on my profile, which is linked on my website. You got to scroll down a little bit. I have um, playlists on my profile to help re-educate everybody on a case-by-case. -case. If you want to DM me or write a question here, or email me or call me, um, all those means are available to y'all. I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm, I'm actually spending a lot of money on a website and a phone and um, all this stuff to provide y'all all this free information um, for y'all to just use. And people that are in my position that have the kind of knowledge that I do actually charge thousands of dollars just to be able to get a chance to have one-on-ones and to be able to, to, to talk and walk with me. Um, Maxim407. I'm desperate for remedy. I've tried admin process for remittance, mortgage, and foreclosure. So mortgages, and I, and I will tell you point blank from all of the mentors that I have ever studied, uh, a mortgage is a death grip, and that is one of the hardest things to undo because typically in the um, most, most of the time what happens, not nine, I mean 90 times out of 100, um, somebody will get into default on a loan, and then, then all of a sudden they want to wave the fraud flag or they want to wave the, oh, my signature paid for everything or, oh, you know, money's fake or, you know, and then start spending all this time studying. And guess what? The promissory note on the loan agreement said if you miss one payment, you're in default and they can start foreclosing. And so by the time you even start to come become awake because you've actually have a fire under your rear end and you're jumping and trying to put in the effort and time to learn how things work, you're already way behind the eight balls. You're, you're, you're way behind. And um, it's almost like anything. You can enforce your position if you know what you're doing. You know, it takes a lot of time to study what is admissible as evidence, um, contract law, how to enforce your uh, procedures, what jurisdiction you want to come from, you know, on and on and on and on. Uh, and, and it looked like even from the affidavit of Walker F. Todd, I, I don't think that the guy won the case, even though... Even though in, in that court case, the guy basically said that, um, you know, the guy's signature created the funds uh, on, on their books and, you know, and tried to, tried to fight it. If you read the affidavit of Walker F. Todd and or the case that involves that situation, you'll learn a lot about um, mortgages. Um, but, yeah, doing an ad, admin process on a remittance you would have to do it'd be more of a uh, you got to learn trust law you have to do um, uh, grantee acceptance and set it to the send it to the right trustee that you appoint um, a lot of people will try to teach you that you already have a trustee and and not unless one has accepted uh, the position from the trust that you've created <laughs> but yeah well, mortgages are, are very very difficult to try to try to be Russell Massengill I truly don't know this woman, and she's accused me of assault. They don't have any evidence, and I warrants. So if she does show up, and it's my word versus her, I just stick to the truth that I don't saying it happened. So, you know, uh, the legal system, you know, on a big, big scale, it's hard to believe, but a lot of this stuff is actually harmonious and balanced to an extent. Of course, nothing's perfect, you know, on and on. But the legal system is actually, uh, one of its flaws is that it doesn't matter what the truth is, it only matters about what you can prove. And when somebody comes and ledgers a, um, an account saying that something happened, it doesn't matter if it did or not. For instance, there's all kinds of sexual allegations that happen all the time from people. But once that account is ledgered and it is put on a public record and a case has been opened or whatever, you're on the downhill side. You have to, you have to prove your position. You know whether or not it happened or didn't especially if there's an injured party that's claiming that they've been wrong and and by injury that could be money monetary it could be um, mental it could be physical spiritual like all kinds of stuff uh, could it could be you know just products that got hurt or or something some type of damage um, if they have a bona fide claim on claim and they're on the opposing uh, side of the table and then that's why there's always a third party intermediary, uh, which is the judge who has sworn an oath to uphold the public bankrupt system that is in the middle of it because two people can't judge their own case um, unless you do by getting an agreement, you know, but you have to make all parties whole if, if somebody's been, been wronged or hurt.
uh, is what I what I teach. I don't teach to try to do um, uh, you know admin processes just to get over on somebody. That's not a very good or honorable path. And trust me, when you start getting on the level that I am, you're watched by many, many, many entities. I'm on all kinds of lists. I have no idea what it says when a cop pulls me over. I can only imagine what his screen looks like. Um, Gordon, thanks for joining Russell. All right, all right. Maxim, blessings to you and your family. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, Chiefess, I'm right. Hi, Charles. What do you recommend for the breach of source data? Um, now, by source, are you referring to the spirit? Are you referring to what's what is source and what is your definition of source? Uh, Queenie, do you have it on your website or where can we find it? What you talking about, babe? Like what what um what are you talking about? <laughs> Did, I mean, because I've talked about a lot and I don't think I'm that far behind. Are you talking about the this video or are you talking about what what was it I was talking about? Uh, Russell Massengill, six comments in my... Oh, I saw them all. Okay, great. There's no evidence. So as long as I stand my ground, there's no way to prove it. Well, it, it doesn't matter if there's evidence or not. It depends on what was said in the opening of the ledgering of the account for um, the case to get open. Uh, Queenie, mortgage is on my website under home, under under commerce home. There's audio that can help re-educate you about trust law and how to um, get remedy. There's uh, in on my website, too, under class... Uh, BA there is processes and that's one of my mentors Brandon Brandon Adams you know who spent a lot of time in jail but he he was a master in contract law and he was doing some mortgage processes and, and he will tell you straight up it's it's like a it's a crapshoot you know it depends on how much effort the and size of the home and all that stuff that you know because they could throw so many lawyers at it, spent so many years and so much time that it would just kill you, you know, and it's like, is it even worth it? Because it's all about, you know, you got to pick and choose your battles and you can always stand on your position. And as long as you've built the record and the evidence and try to bring that, bring that home, but you, again, you got to understand about all, all the different things, the jurisdictions, what's admissible in that court. You got to go through the court rules um, and, you know, un understand the exceptions to the hearsay rule and, and whatnot. Uh, let me go back a second and see what happened. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, user 47483073091, can a bank block your estate account for years, and what can I do? Um, typically, you know, the IRS can do stuff like that. They can start seizing assets after they do a, an administrative process. And the IRS typically doesn't enforce stuff. They sub it out. But... Um, the, the the bank can if some loan if you have like an agreement between a loan shark or you have some type of um, uh, UCC filed or something like that you know like someone can enforce some but typically a bank wouldn't block your estate account for years unless you're caught up in like banking fraud because you got to remember that Federal Reserve notes are someone else's property that was created uh, and, and the U.S. is a a corporation for everything for federal banking like any anything dealing with transactions that have money um, and that's why if you watch the old um, cops shows where they put out prosies as bait and they wait and as soon as Federal Reserve notes, notes are exchanged that's when they jump on the guy like even though they're they're the ones that created the situation by putting a, a, a police officer as a prosy on the street then they come in and film it and then they catch the guy when, when, you know, they're the ones that's putting the bait out. Um, but they don't, they don't do any move until that Federal Reserve note has been exchanged because once you do that, you're dealing in federal um, territory because that's federal property, and you're using that as a medium ex of exchange. Um, thanks for all the likes, guys. Um, but, yeah, a bank, um, a bank typically wouldn't block your estate unless they are being given um, orders from like a police or you're under investigation for like um, banking fraud or, or some type of case has been opened uh, you know they don't usually just block your account uh, you could just go to another bank um, unless you're you know you're trying to withdraw funds that aren't in the account on the public side, you got to remember there's a public and a private. On the private side, there's tons of assets, but that's not how the, the public plays. The public is bankrupt, uneducated, and, and crazy. So when you're dealing in the public world, you know, the fiat currency that's backed by nothing but a promise to pay one day when you're messing with all that in the federal zones, um, 
that's uh, it's a whole smoke and mirrors pony show, horse and pony show. Uh, Chief Dismara, personal credentials, SSN. Oh, so yeah, I heard about that. I looked into it a little bit. I looked into the Social Security breach. I heard there's there was a lot of um, funds that were being withdrawn and, and I don't or are being hacked. And my understanding is uh, that the Social Security number is the linchpin turning the U.S. citizen into a federal personnel, and that the taxing system that it is a trust fund you know that's basically set up with the social security and that's on the public but on the private is the bond that where the real assets are now um whoever the, the the code says whoever partakes in a federal benefits program is a federal personnel and the social security uh is a federal benefits program and that's why the u.s citizen gets turned into a federal personnel by engaging in that in that number and they want you to have that number. They need. They almost need you to have it, and um, so they can get that uh, jurisdiction over the U.S. citizen real quick. Um, but when the the hacking that stuff goes on all the time. And typically, when the uh, public me mainstream media tells you to look left, that means something's happening over here to the right. And for instance, you know everybody thinks that money is real and legit. You know, put it in your face, and you're like, oh yeah, what you want me to do? You want me to twerk for it? You want me to clap? You know, and it's it's basically worthless. And and that's how the public operates. So when the the mainstream media is who are controlled by a very few people at the very top of the the pyramid. Um, tell you to look left that usually means they're trying to do something over here to the right and and it's just a kind of all of a smoke and mirror for all of these sheep that are indoctrinated um, so you know it's hard to tell whether or not that's that stuff's even valid or not um, you know the social security you paid all your life and then they'll deny you when you actually need it and this you know it's all in the public system um, there's a private way to access it as well Octopus Prime, I am loving on that handle. I love it. All right. If you own a majority of the banks, it doesn't matter. That is true. You know, a lot of them are, um, who, who said, who said uh, if I control the, the money, it doesn't matter what laws you make or, you know, something like that. I think that was the quote from one of the, one of the top of the pyramid of the, you know, elites that control all the corporations that run everything. Um Max Zim 407. How about putting judge as trustee and 56 them? You can use those forms or you can create your own. You know, typically you got to check and make sure and see who created the form um, because they get control of what they create. And if it's uh, under some type of jurisdiction, you got to be careful because you can you can create the same form and just not have like an OMB number or you can, you can hail the um, the private equity side of the republic or you know whatever common law or, or uh, international commercial admiralty or whatever you know it's up to you what kind of jurisdiction you want to hail but uh when you when you're you dealing with somebody else's forms you've got to be careful it's the same thing with federal reserve notes the same thing with banking it's the same thing with buying houses and, and exchanging and dealing and, and stuff that we have no clue about who created what you're messing with because there could be underlying strings attached, like the U.S. citizen. We didn't create that. So whoever created it gets to control it, and they have all kinds of, of um, strings attached to it that you're not even aware of. Um, but that's almost like any relationship. Everything has a plus, a pro, and a con. You know, it just depends on what you want. And that brings me back to what I was talking about earlier. You want to pick your battles because if you are going to do an administrative procedure and then you're going to do all the research and effort to be able to look at what's admissible, what's an exception to the hearsay rule and try to stand on your position, you, you're going to have a battle and you will be tested. And you can win. Uh, same thing for a trust. Uh, I think I just saw something about a trust. Um, yeah, so if, you, if you're if putting a judge as a trustee, you can, but they don't have to accept it because there is no involuntary servitude. So. Even though uh, a trustee denies being the, the trust uh, trustee uh, of that position, there's a maximum in trust law that basically says a trust cannot fail for lack of trustee. So even if you appoint the judge as a trustee, even though you know the whole case is in, in trust and the, and the judge is supposed to, typically you don't want to do that in the public while there's people behind you. you got to move the court to the private. But Let's just say you did move the court to the private and he denies being the trustee. The trust still exists and, and, and is enforceable and cannot fail just because the trustee um, didn't accept the position. So you can continue and try to find another trustee or, you know, just kind of let it piddle out or whatever. Um, Octopus Prime, Social Security is useless. 
It is a tax identification number that basically monitors all of the transactions of the U.S. citizen in order to um, allow the U.S. citizen to do public banking, right? And, um, and, and it's an IRS basically linchpin that was created by the creditors of the U.S. to monitor all the transactions that go on by the U.S. citizen because the U.S. citizen has four liens on it and all the liens go to um, the, the federal, state, medical, and Social Security. And those are the four liens on a U.S. citizen. If you want to use that entity, you have to deal with that off the rip. That's like first and foremost. Uh, Majestic Star, love your info and amazing person. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on here and being a part of this um, collective intelligence. Uh, Majestic Star, I have SSDI and SSI. How does that work if I change it? So what is an SSDI? Um, Social Security Disability or what is on an SSDI number? I don't know if I've ever heard of that before. Uh, yeah, a disability. Um, yeah, so there, there are benefits. So you, like I said from the beginning, Social Security is a public benefit. It is a federal benefits program that you can use you in the public or in the private, right? There's a private side and a public side to that contract. When you look at it um, on your card, it'll say it's it's it belongs to the Social Security Administration. It's not even your number. It's not even the U.S. citizen's number. It's just it's Social Security's number. But that's the public number. There's a private number on the back, which is the red bond that's that you can use also. But there are, like I said, pros and cons to everything. If you want to gain um, the benefits of using Social Security when you retire, you can. You know, and I have a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, I want to become a national, and you know, I don't want to lose my Social Security benefits. And it's like, it's like, look, I'm not being you know forked tongue to an extent. But all those are just tools that you can use. The U.S. citizen is a tool that you can use. The national is a corporation tool that you can use. Or you can create a different entity if you want to do business with, with that to engage in contracts with. And, you know, it's just up to you how you want to do your business. And that's what you're actually taxed on. But a Social Security disability number is probably tied to the SSI, which would be the master accounting holding of the U.S. citizen's transactions. Um, but the, the disability is just um, one of the benefits of using that public Social Security federal program. Um, Octopus Prime, that dude is, what, was smart. Oh, Nathan Rothschild. Yeah, he is smart. He is smart. Hmm. Or was. I see what you're getting at now. Yeah, he was smart. And, and that is kind of true because if you're paying, you know, you get to control what you create. And if you're funding something, you know, AKA, yes, everybody uses Federal Reserve notes in the public bankrupt system. Okay, whatever. So if you have a bunch of Federal Reserve notes and you're paying for some type of program, some type of medical research, some type of um, a school, some type of whatever, you can actually control how that goes to an extent. Now, if it's going to be registered federally and it's going to be in a federal zone, then you got to go by all the codes and building statutes and all that stuff on and on and on, yada, yada, yada. If it's on someone else's land, AKA the you know, the bankrupt uh, Washington, D.C., all that stuff. Um, fiduciary appointment. Oh, oh. <clears throat> Maxim, how do we access private side? I just want to keep my house, go to Treasury maybe. So, yeah, that's one way to um, try to discharge a debt or set it off is by uh, doing a grantee acceptance on it and creating a trust indenture and appointing the alien property custodian, who I think is like the attorney general or something now, I'm not sure. Um, uh, as a trustee to set off, settle, and close the account. Um, and, you know, my, one of my old mentors says you have to have one of your birth certificates authenticated in order to do that. But I, I just, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't, you know. But that's, that's what they claim in order to do that, that route. But the other way is a very lengthy, tedious thing that I have. You have to go through all my DTC videos and my discharging debt videos in order to go through the private side of the uh, using the social security bond through the DTC um, Maxim 407 fiduciary appointment act okay um, o octopus prime what are the four things oh I think I already said them if you're talking about the four liens uh, yes uh, so octopus prime so they can they can try to make you disabled to take your money well, it's their money. Well, it's, it's, it's the Federal Reserve s System's money, which is, is private military war script. And, and whenever an occupying um, company takes over another corporation, 
the, there's two things that go out the window. The first thing is the truth, and the second thing is the money, because they want to basically uh, watch and all transactions that happen on the enemy because they want to make sure they're not trying to build up sanctions or arms against them. So once a, a corporation takes over another one, the, they will immediately start monitoring all of the transactions that happen through their money. Um, that way nobody can like, you know, take over without them knowing. If you can control the money, like you control almost everything, and that's why everybody only cares about money. And that's what gets everybody up out of bed. That's what you know, people kill for and die for, and it's worthless in the public anyway. Um, and in the private, it's just, you know, numbers on the screen. I've always had that gut-burning feeling spiritually that all of the um, currency is just false. It's just, you know, it's just, it's backed by nothing but a promise to pay one day. And it's just nothing. Um, all right, right. I don't want to lose it. Uh, I need help with figuring out how to go private and open up a trust. So no, you can continue. The U.S. citizen can continue to receive the benefits, right? So the U.S. citizen was created and controlled by the District of Columbia, and it is engaged in a federal benefits program, and it can continue to do that. You are a sovereign human that is above and beyond all of those things. It's just a tool that you can use should you want to. It's up to you. Just like a Federal Reserve note. It has underlying strings attached to it if you want to use it. But it's up to you as a sovereign whether or not you want to use that to engage as a medium of exchange with or not. You know, um, Octopus Prime, or say you are clinically insane to have control over it. Um, yeah, they, they try to do that in the public, especially if you're trying to wave the sovereign flag in a courtroom, especially when there's people around. They will try to get you in a Feretta hearing, trying to say what you're talking about is crazy, you're nuts, you know, the you know, U.S. citizen can't be a person, you know, even though a person was, is... Uh, you know, defined as a trust or a corporation. Um, Maxim 407, I'm thinking standard form 30, collapsing the SS. Um, I don't think that will collapse the SS. I don't think a standard form 30 would collapse an SS, um, from what I remember from the standard forms. SRF 30 form. Uh, standard form amendment of solicitation modification of contract. You know, it's you know any contract law is about offer and acceptance, and you can send this to Social Security and basically tell them to stop using that number. But you got to remember it's their number, right? Um, the easiest thing is to just dock the U.S. citizen and not use it anymore because you know the U.S. citizen was controlled by the the creators, D.C., and the Social Security ID number, the tax identification number for the corporation, is created by the Social Security Administration. It is tied together with the IRS, you know, who are third-party neutral accountants that basically just monitor all the transactions for the creditors. Um, but yeah, trying to uh, you can you can enforce your position no matter what it is, unless it's like insane, like trying to tell somebody that they have to take a bite out of the moon or you're going to blow off their big toe or something like that. Like you know, so, some of those things are not enforceable um, because it's just it, it's impossible. You know, in the natural realm, to an extent, and so other than that, you know, as the sovereign, you have the unlimited ability to contract, and you can contract however you want. Guys, this all live will be on YouTube. The audio will be on my Telegram group. Feel free to browse around on my website, which has all my social medias linked on it. That's on my profile page. If you click on my emblem, I have a playlist to help re-educate you. If you go on my website, it also has tons of auxiliary information, depending on what your path is and what you want to be engaged and learn more about, whether it's nature, spirit, or commerce. Um, those are the three lights and foundations that I'm laying for everybody to build upon, and you can choose the path that you want. Thanks for the following. Thanks for all the hearts. I'm up to 2,000. Um, got, I got two, got two followers. That's awesome um, so far. All right, so Octopus Prime. I have been saving for, for an illness for six years and not insane. Yeah, that sucks. Um, no, Octopus Prime. But if you own the Fed, it's your money. That is correct. Yeah. So whoever whoever the private uh, international bankers are that control the Fed are basically controlling the money, right? But if you look at it on a big scale, um, you're not really taxed on how you um, if you're if you're engaged in not for profit, and you can almost do everything that a for profit can, except for try to hide massive amounts of money. So. If you're going to try to be engaged in for profit, then you you know you're going to be taxed heavily. Um, now, if you uh, control the Fed, then yeah, then uh, everybody's working for you basically to an extent. 
Um, but Maxim, I thank you for your wealth of knowledge. I uh, appreciate it. I'm glad to be able to sh share and spread some of it to all you people that are here. Much appreciated. Um, uh, Maxim 407, me too. I don't care about money. I'm happy. Simple life. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, David, my telegram is linked on my website. My website is linked on my profile page of TikTok. So you just got to go on my emblem, click on it, and then scroll down a little bit. You'll see I have like Twitter or X or whatever it is now, uh, telegram, TikTok, YouTube, and um, that's about it, I think. I don't really mess with the meta metaverse, metaphor, force, whatever that stuff is. Um, Oculus Prime, who does... Who goes into business not to make a profit? So uh, a not-for-profit can make massive amounts of money. Uh, a a not-for-profit can actually make more money quicker than a for-profit can because not only are you trying to help out human, hu humankind, you know, you're not going to be taxed, and it's easy to find investors because it's tax write-off, plus you're not getting taxed. So the, the, uh, almost all of the corporations that are out there can work, operate almost the exact same way a not or, or a for-profit can by being a not-for-profit, except for trying to hide massive amounts of money. And what the IRS has been uh, established for in one of their codes for taxing is because people like to hide massive amounts of money. And when you, um, I just noticed my picture back here is off a little bit. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, and, and corporate greed is basically a very insidious system that tries to put people at the bottom and greed and wealth at the top of the all-seeing eye, just like on the um, dollar bill if you look at it. So the IRS is, is, will tax you heavily for that because that's what they're trying to prevent. They're trying to prevent that for-profit system which basically manufactures lack. They, they create things that have a planned obsolescence. They um, basically don't care about humankind. They just only care about money and greed and they pay dearly for it because it's all taxed pretty heavily. Um, but you're basically only taxed on how you do business. If you're engaged in for-profit in a federal zone, then you're going to be taxed, and that's how, how it's established. Um, anyway, David, if I have control of a nonprofit organization, do I still need a trust? So everything's in trust, believe it or not, even though we're all taught, you know, there's LLCs and pastor entities and money's in trust, relationships are in trust, words are in trust, your body's in trust, you trust when you're sitting in a chair that it's not going to break in half, you know, everything's in trust out there, but um, the public can only hand, handle duality of uh, positive, negative, winner, loser, anger, love, you know, rain and sun, you know, on and on and on. But yeah, depending on what you're trying to do would be whether or not you need a trust. You, you don't necessarily need to create a trust uh, for the nonprofit. Now, typically, uh, a not-for-profit is if you did it a, a, the standard public way, it's going to be registered and controlled by the District of Columbia if it was registered to a corporate state because the states have pledged all their titles and everything to the federal government to uh, try to help it out of its bankruptcy. Um, yeah, you can't stay in business if you don't make money. I understand that. A not-for-profit makes money. They make massive money. CEOs of not-for-profits make millions of dollars, okay? It's all about uh, the IRS just wants to know where the money goes. That's the only real difference. You can still be registered in a federal zone and engaged in uh, not-for-profit activities and make massive amounts of money. Massive. The only difference is, is a for-profit wants to hide that money from the IRS. They don't want the IRS to know where all the money's going because they want to be greedy. They want to try to shuffle stuff around and bake books and hide stuff and keep um, profit as their ultimate goal on top of over human life, over top of, of all that stuff. A not-for-profit can make massive amounts of money. Church Churches, you know, there's pastors that have Lear jets. They have like, all, you know, all kinds of stuff. You can do the exact same thing that a for-profit can, including making massive amounts of money, which is would be called profit, except for one, you don't get taxed, and two, you don't hide it from the IRS or collectors or whatever. You just report it. That's it. They just want to know that, you, that you've had it. And guess what? A for-profit has to report anyway also because the creditors of the United States that, that established the IRS as a neutral third-party accountants want to know where all the money's, money is being trans, transacted. 
So even a not-for-profit wants everything's established or moved uh, according to codes and statutes if it's registered. You can do stuff with the money without the IRS knowing. You know, you can donate to certain things and, and do all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, Vin, Vin Diendi, what's up, Charles? Hope all is well, brother. All is well, man. Everything is very, very great and out here in, in my world. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. The weather is cooling off a little bit more around room temperature. I'm a, I'm a fair weather man myself. Very busy. Uh, barely had enough time to hop on here. Dang, it's already almost over because uh, I typically only stay on here for an hour. Um, so if you guys got any questions, I set this time aside to help everybody on a case-by-case -case basis the best that I can. Um, so feel free to ask any and all questions. Uh, try to reach everybody in equity. And if you don't want to ask here, you can DM me, email me, or call me. Um, so Octopus Prime. So you can start a nonprofit organization like a church. It doesn't just have to be a church. Um, so typically a not-for-profit's goal is try to try to help. It doesn't matter if it's education or, or people or kids or animals or whatever, you know, humanity. Um, a for-profit is basically established for one reason only. That is to make more money. That is the ultimate goal of the board at the very top is to not care about anything but the bottom dollar. That is their ultimate goal. And that is the main, the main two big differences between a for-profit and a not-for-profit. Is a not-for-profit is try to structure is typically structured around some type of goal that will edify something except for the board, you know. And yes, not-for-profits have boards that make all you know decisions as well. But um, typically, their their ultimate goal is not to um, bleed everybody in sweat equity, working them to the bone until you know for as little as payment and recoupment as possible. It has some ultimate agenda that is above all that. And that's why it's typically not taxed as much either. Um, Maximum 407 is a 1099B or A to inform IRS of money goes. That is a... A 1099A is an acquisition or abandonment of property. Uh, I've never heard of a 1099B. I don't even know if that... Does that exist? I've heard of a 1099C... Uh, 1099 B. Oh, 1099 B is an informational document that brokers send to people who have sold securities, such as stocks or bonds, through a brokerage. Well, that's probably why I haven't heard of it because I've never um, uh, received or sold securities, like stocks or bonds, through a brokerage during the years outlined in the security. So, okay. Um, so that's what a 1099 B is. Um, and a 1099 C is for a cancellation of debt. Um, blah, 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 to, uh, Optim uh, Octopus Prime. I'm just call you Opt Optimus Prime. Is uh, that was a tricky tongue twister there? What if I? What if you don't want to hide large funds and you'd rather pay higher taxes? Then just keep playing the game the way it is. I mean, it's established for that anyway, for profit. Yeah, you, I mean, that's that's how it, you can still you can still make money after paying all your taxes. You just don't get taxed. Just imagine if you got to keep 33% of all of what you're giving the IRS by doing the same thing. You know, that's that's how you got to kind of look at it. It's like, um, I got a report that I'm making this money anyway, so do I want to give the IRS, which, by the way, doesn't go to any public, um, basically, uh, programs by sending taxes. And I, I, I'm going to make, I'm going to mention in my video coming up soon um, about where the taxes actually go because they've done a study on it and it doesn't actually go where people think it does, you know. Um, uh, Vindy, Indy, thanks for the information on the corporation soul. Been listening and studying. That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad that you uh, like that entity. That is my one of my favorite entities out there. It is a very, very unique, powerful tool that kind of tied everything together to me or for me with nature, spirit, and commerce. And that's why I really, really appreciate that type of uh, structure and that entity and the way it is established. It is, for, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, a trust, but it's also like the equivalent, equal opposite of the evil U.S. citizen. You know, it's a, it's a one-man corporation. Um, but what's cool about the, the difference between a U.S. citizen and a corporation soul is DC created the U.S. citizen is, uh, is under control and has all those liens on whatever. The U.S. or the uh, corporation soul is by statute recognized that a sovereign created it and it's outside of all those jurisdictions and has the power of a municipal government. You know, so it's like, you know, which one would you rather use? 
uh, Vindy and E. Uh, um, oh, yeah, so, so I'm very glad. Uh, Octopus, thanks for the following. Uh, and thank you for thanking me for all the info. I, I appreciate you being on here. Uh, what's up, Awareness Daily? Yo, I'm I'm so I'm so busy that I I didn't even have time to tell my Telegram group that I'm going live. So guys, typically I do put like nine times out of ten I'll tell my Telegram group when I'm going live. I'll say I'm going live in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, so they can get a kind of heads up and like you know grab a snack or whatever to get ready to um, uh, watch me on live or ask any questions or whatever they might have. Uh, it's a little easier for me to answer on here than it is on the Telegram group, which I had to delete from my phone, and it sucks. But it was taking up 11 megabytes of data, so I just had to I had to delete it because I'm parts of all kinds of groups. So it's on my computer still, and I you know I, I don't I'm not as active in it as I'd like to be. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at is I do I do post on there that um, when I'm going live, and this time I'm, I'm so busy today that I didn't uh, I didn't even mention it on there. So I hope everybody's doing well. Um, this is a beautiful Friday. This audio or the video will be on YouTube. The audio will be on my Telegram group, like I mentioned. Uh, feel free to reach out and ask any and all questions. I've uh, gone to the bottom. I try to stay on here for about an hour. But if there are no other questions or nobody's interested in, in trying to find out anything, we can always wrap up early because I've got plenty to do. i got to hop in the shower. Um, but Jessica Starr, uh, click my, my Telegram is Nature Spirit and Chat Group, but you got to... To find it, just click on my website that's on my profile of TikTok. Um, scroll down a little bit and you see the little chain link. It has my website, which is anointednewfoundationofpeace.life. And uh, if you scroll down just a, a tad bit, you'll see all my social media is linked there. You'll see my YouTube, you'll see my um, Telegram, Twitter, Truth, Social, uh, TikTok, all that stuff's on there. Um, how do you, Maxim, how do you do DTC? So that's uh, outlined roughly in on my website or on my uh, video called discharging debt and it's also roughly outlined to an extent um, how it all works in my DTC videos and there's more information on my website under um, commerce class if you want to uh, if you want to learn more about that um, just sorry, I love everything you are about and love and we're like thank you very much yeah I, I try my best to always come from that position of love because um, you know some people think it's it's you know, love isn't all that, but it's like one of the most powerful, undefined, edifying forces out there that tie us all together, you know, and in the three lights. And, um, you know, being a part of that is amazing. Love moves everything, you know, it's just, you know, what do you love doing? Who do you love? What do you want? You know, it's, it's all, you know, love is, is all law. And, you know, I say Allah, love, love is all law, all law. And the, the reason for that is because um, that's, that's what the, my favorite law book even says, you know, love your neighbors yourself and love the Lord your, with all your heart and soul. And it's all summed up this, you know, love is, love is all right there. You know, just uh, instead of learning 20 billion codes and public policies and statutes that will never, ever finish being created, just learn love. Come from the position of love. Take every single uh, moment and coming from righteous judgment and peace and love and equity and that's that's it that's the answer that's the key that's the, the about the trust about the the, the love and the love is all love you know it's just so it's, it's so much easier when you do that than instead of trying to um play around in the public world it's great to know all this public policies codes and statutes but it's the only purpose is to understand how corporations are bound uh thanks for the sharing of the live remy uh, Pale Horseman, I believe I acquired my SESTA-Q trust because my land was placed into investment trust and treasury. Receipt came through the mail because my plot holds the title. That's very interesting. So typically you have to go through an agent. So you got to remember that any banking transactions are dealing in federal systems. And the Congress has basically established where you have to go through an agent to basically do any and all uh, banking transactions. So to, to access, uh, like, like for instance, when you receive a paycheck from a corporation and you sign the back of it, the banks or the agents authorized to access the private equity assets of the BC Social Security estate. And um, to, to access the private side of the Sista Q Vi Trust, typically you have to go through a treasury, I mean, um, a banking agent. Now, to, to acquire true title to your land, you, 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 well, I say you don't, but, you know, you got you to gotta figure out 
if there's any liens on the property, you got to do a grant acceptance on it and re record it. You got to make sure there's no heirs or successors to the original patent or grant from the king um, by going through the land bureau. Is it the Bureau of Land Management? Um, resources and finding where you know what's going on with your land so many psh, my girl hates that I don't pay for ad free YouTube or, or you know and I'm like I just I don't feel like I don't feel like going <laughs> uh, Maxim congrats brother that would be nice yes uh, Pale Horseman yeah I didn't take it to the agent I deposited Fidelity and it showed them taking my money acting that's interesting as if I'm a commissioner. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've never heard anybody having success with that kind of stuff. And I believe even, um, what was that one site where you could, uh, you used to be able to look up your social on the public side and see what they were doing with it um, through Fidelity. Um, but then they changed it where you got to be registered and all this other stuff because there's too many people that were going after it and looking at it and stuff. But that's all in the public too I mean on, on the private that's you gotta look up the bond number uh, on the back of the social security card to see what all is going on with that um, alright guys so if there's any other questions please feel free to ask if not I'm gonna wrap up and, and call it uh, call it a day um, it is uh, busy I'm a little tired I got a shower and then I gotta go dancing so if um, if there's any more questions, uh, how do I get statements, remittance, bonds, endorsed? I tried a few times. These corpse didn't accept. Yeah, we're not authorized. Um, I mean, we're we're author we're the authorized agent of the uh, uh, sorry the the U.S. citizen, but we're not authorized to engage in certain banking and financial transactions as um, it's all in the federal system, and you got to have you got to be licensed and insured and bonded and. and you know oaths and all this other stuff to do certain things or go through a bank um, now the US citizen is somewhat of a bank and we are the authorized representative for it but we're not authorized to do certain things and you got to understand the rules to the games that you're playing in so when you start dealing in restrictive endorsements and trying to make bonds and stuff like that we're we're not authorized to do that kind of stuff um, right they're operating in our name so it's not your name you think it's your name because it sounds like your name but it is the it is a corporation that was created and pledged by your mom your mom created the all capital name entity by submitting to the state and the state controls it and it just is what it is but you can control your own entity if you want to and you know it's just up to you how you want to want to deal out there um, so you can pick whatever status you want, Maxim. You're, you're not a U.S. citizen or a national. Those are all corporations and tools that you can use. I suggest watching the playlist on my profile, uh, Nature, Spirit, Commerce, and Foundation, or Foundation, Nature, Spirit, and Commerce, uh, in order. That'll help. It'll, it'll, it takes a few hours, and you should take some notes, and it'll blow your mind because it'll change your perspective on everything. But my path is not necessarily y'all's path, okay? So... You know, take that in mind with a grain of salt or whatever. Um, nobody has views 100% on the same as me, but I can show y'all a lot of the a lot of things that I've learned over the years. And um, if it's for you, grow grow on it. You know, if not, you know, it is, it is what it is. But anyway, guys, I do appreciate you. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up um, in which you ever you want, depending on your path. Yeah, that's right. If you want to go through nature, spirit, or commerce, or come from love and fire in the middle, you know, all, all that stuff, is, is, it's up to you what your path is, you know. Um, anyway, guys, this live will be on YouTube, the audio on my Telegram group. Feel free to browse on my website. I have all these playlists on my social media. It's linked on my website. Uh, I have all, tons of auxiliary information to help re-educate you. All, my, all the paths are there and laid out for you if you want to build upon them. That's up to you. I'm glad that y'all came on here, and I'm glad I got to share a little bit here on a Friday. He's trying to sneak it in real quick. I am a little bit tired, and I'm getting hop in the shower. So, anyway, I hope y'all enjoy your weekend. Um, and enjoy your life. So that's what it's kind of all about is you got to come from love and enjoy things. You know, if not, you're just going to be miserable. So anyway, I'll try to catch y'all next week. I wish I could have made a video this week. I didn't even have time to make a video. Typically, I try to, to make one video a week and come on once a week live. And I almost didn't come on live. And I'm like, I got to at least do one of them. So um, love you guys. Enjoy yourself. And I will catch you next